Hello, everybody. So we are on our last leg of uh, consolidated financial statements, intra-entity asset transactions. Uh, we're moving away from inventory to now take into consideration other assets uh, like land and depreciable assets. So we're still the same concept of intra-entity sales where we're going to defer any gain or loss until uh, the asset is sold to an outside party that is no part of the consolidation, uh, consolidated financial statements. So in this case, we have an example on July 1st, Hastings sold land to Patrick uh, for 60, uh, the cost of the land was 60,000. The transfer price is 100,000. So the seller recognizes a gain of $40,000. Now, to get a picture of this, we have the seller's uh, financial records. This is what the seller, in this case, Hastings, would have reported in their uh, financial statements. And then the buyer, Patrick, this is what they would have reported on their financial statements. So we can see that we currently have a land that is overstated by $40,000. We have to put that land back to its original uh, cost on a consolidated basis. And we also have to get rid of this gain. So we have our entry TL. And this is in the year of transfer. If you recall our inventory intra-entity transaction, we had an entry TI for the current year uh, to uh, eliminate the current year sales. Uh, in this case, we have entry TL, I guess transfer of land. Um, and so we are crediting the land, therefore reducing the land by 40,000. Remember that the buyer had recorded it at 100,000 to reduce it back to its cost of 60,000, okay? And then the gain, uh, we have to debit the gain to get rid of this gain. And so uh, in order to do so, we have to debit. So in, in essence, uh, it's kind of like reversing everything back that each, the buyer and the seller, uh, finance, the, the, any recordings, that were posted to their financial statements, undo any of that and go back to the way it was before because of the relationship that they have and the consolidation. In subsequent years, we are going to, since that gain is gonna roll over into, uh, for the seller side, uh, that gain will roll over into the retained earnings, then what we have to decrease, so we have an entry GL. This is every year after the initial year uh, when the sale took place, then we're going to have to debit retained earnings and credit land in subsequent years until the land is sold to an outside party or uh, the companies are no longer required to prepare consolidated financial statements. So again, once again, we have to pay attention if the transfer is downstream, so that means from parent to subsidiary, or upstream from subsidiary to parent. Okay, and so if it's downstream, instead of retained earnings, we're gonna be using investment and subsidiary account. If it's upstream, then we're using retained earnings. Okay, so in this case, uh, I think we already looked at this entry. Oh, I'm sorry, this is um, if in a subsequent year, the land is finally sold to an outside party. So we are actually recognizing the gain now uh, we still have to do a debit to retain earnings to get rid of the seller's gain that keeps carrying over in their uh, financial records on retained earnings. And then we finally record gain in the year that the land was sold to an outsider. Okay. Okay, so now we're looking at depreciable assets, okay, depreciable assets. Uh, so with depreciable assets, it's going to be a little more complicated because we're also looking at depreciation expense 
and then accumulated depreciation. Okay, so we have an example here. We have Able Company sells equipment to Baker on January 1st, 2017. Uh, Able originally acquired the equipment for 100,000. Uh, the current value, so this must be the sales price, is 90,000. Had accumulated depreciation of 40,000 and remaining life of 10 years. So Able, okay, Able is the seller. Uh, when they sell the equipment, they would debit cash for the 90,000, debit the accumulated depreciation, credit equipment, and as a result of the sale, they had a gain on sale for $30,000. Now the buyer will record the equipment at 90,000 and then credit cash. Uh, now we said, or we mentioned that uh, the remaining life of this equipment is 10 years, which means that the seller would have had uh, $6,000 of depreciation, annual depreciation expense related to this equipment. The buyer on the other hand has a different basis and so their depreciation is slightly higher. So remember that we need to reverse this whole entire transaction on a consolidated basis. So that means that right now, um, if we don't make an adjustment, the equipment will be showing at 90,000, but it needs to show at 100,000. So that means we have to increase equipment by $10,000. We also have to get rid of this gain Right, and we need to kind of credit this 40,000 back to put that back into the consolidated balance sheet. At the same time, we have to pay attention to the depreciation. Uh, it's, it's hard to write with this pen, but there's a $3,000 difference here. Uh, so uh, currently we have a depreciation expense that is overstated by $3,000 on a consolidated basis. So we're gonna have to credit depreciation expense to put it back to the original 6,000. So here we have the entry that's required, the consolidation entry that's required in the year of transfer, the year that the, the, the sale took place. Uh, we have a debit to gain to decrease the gain to zero, right? We don't wanna record any gain on consolidated basis related to this intra-entity transfer. We said before that we had to increase the equipment. The buyer has it currently at 90,000, but the seller's original uh, cost was 100,000, so we need to increase that by 10,000. And then we need to put back our accumulated depreciation of 40,000. In addition to this, we're going to have a consolidation entry ED. And this is in uh, because the buyer had depreciation expense of 9,000, while the seller had depreciation expense of 6,000. So we have to decrease the depreciation from 9 to 6. So we have a credit to depreciation expense and a debit to accumulated depreciation. So, uh, and if in a subsequent year, okay, so that took place in 2017. So now we are in 2018 uh, for entry uh, TA or star TA, which is in the following year. Uh, then we're going to have our equipment. It's always going to be 10,000. That will not change. Our accumulated depreciation, on the other hand, is going to change because we have that $3,000 difference, which is gonna chip away uh, this accumulated depreciation, okay? The same way with the gain. So uh, the gain was uh, 30,000 minus 3,000 in uh, depreciation difference. So now we have a retained earnings um, adjustment to uh, beginning retained earnings of 27,000. So we have to account for the effect of depreciation. And then this entry ED does not change for the next 10 years until the asset is fully depreciated.
So once again, if it's downstream, we're going to be using investment in subsidiary account instead of retained earnings. Retained earnings we use when it's upstream. Okay, and that concludes our presentation.